Hello and welcome to Celebration Church, where God is met, love is felt, and lives are changed. We're grateful that you're joining us today for this online service. We're about to worship together and then hear an encouraging sermon from the Bible. You can find your online worship guide at webcc.info. Once you're there, you'll find tabs for prayer requests, our kids and teens ministry, and today's sermon notes. So go ahead and use those notes as a guide to help you during today's sermon. Right now, let's join together for a time of worship.
everybody. We're so glad to have you with us today. My name is Amber Baroni, and it is my joy and honor to pray with you today. Father, we just thank you. Lord, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one above you. There is no other than you. Father, we ask that you would open the heavens and send down your angels to meet with us today, God, that you would stop this virus in the name of Jesus, that you would break it off in the name of Jesus, that it would fall away as the chains are loose in the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying for the doctors and for the scientists. We are praying for all those who are working on a, a solution for this, God, for you to give them wisdom and discernment, that you would give them ideas and understanding. Father, that you would break through and such a way that it is for your glory, for your honor, that we would be able to experience you like never before through this opportunity, through seeing you move in such a way as this. God, I pray for those who have been affected by it. Father, I pray that you would open up their lungs, that you would open up the passageway for the air to get to their bodies. I pray for healing to be upon them, Father. I pray for protection for those that you would stop them from being able to receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for our frontline people, God, for our first responders, for our medical teams, for our doctors, for our nurses, for our x-ray technicians, God, for all those in the hospitals who are coming in contact with it. Father, I pray that you would put your protection upon them. I pray that you would give them your glory upon them, God. I pray that you would give them your angels to encamp about them. I pray that you would be with them, God, and that you would go forth before them, God. I pray, Lord, that you would give us the opportunity to see you move like never before. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You are our hope, not just for this moment, for our every day, for every moment today and tomorrow that was yesterday and that will to come. You are the hope that we reside in. You are the hope that we hold on to. You are our hope. Father, we sing hallelujah because you are the king. We sing hallelujah because you are the master. We sing hallelujah because without you, it doesn't make sense. We sing to you, God. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. As you bring in your word today, God, that we would hear from you, that we would understand you, that we would receive from you, and that we would be forever changed by you, God. We ask that you would go before us and follow after us. Hem us in on both sides. Father, that there is no way that we can turn, that you aren't already there. We thank you. We worship you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I will 
Hello, and welcome to Celebration Church. We're so glad you've joined us today. In a few moments, we're going to hear the next sermon from our series, Real Christianity in a Challenging World. We hope it makes a difference in your life. Recently, a small crowd of people from seven different life groups decided to bless one of our elderly members struggling with cancer. They gathered outside her home, showered her with cards and gifts, sang worship songs, and prayed for her. It's awesome to see people give of themselves for the good of others. We are thankful for them and also for those of you who give faithfully of your tithes and offerings. You're helping make ministry like this possible. If you would like to give today, you can do so by texting the word GIVE and the dollar amount to 504-380-9939. You can find that number at the Give Online tab at webcc.info. Thanks for giving. With everything going on in the world today, people have more questions than ever. And this coming Saturday morning, Celebration is hosting a Got Question seminar from Ravi Zacharias speaker, Nathan Betts. His topics will be the uniqueness of the Christian God and finding help in the pandemic from the Bible. The seminar is completely free and there's no registration required. The sessions are gonna premiere on the Metairie New Orleans campus YouTube channel at 10 and 11 a.m. this coming Saturday morning. We hope you'll join us for this great learning opportunity. Would you like to send your children to a school that shares the value and culture of Celebration Church, offers flexibility for how they can attend, and is committed to safety during these challenging times? Crescent City Christian School is a ministry of Celebration Church and provides biblically-based, in-person education from daycare through 12th grade at its Metairie location. In addition to our traditional school setting, we now offer several distance learning plans, including a parent-led homeschool-type program, a fully teacher-supported online option that can be taken from anywhere in the world, and a hybrid in-person option. We offer a large catalog of course offerings, including career-based learning, challenging academic programs for the college-bound students, the possibility to earn college credits while in high school, and the ability to participate in the school's athletics, arts, and student life. We offer a variety of payment options, qualified assistance, and discounts for our Celebration Church family. Call 504-885 4700 today for more information or to schedule a tour. Or you can visit our website at crescentcitychristian.com. Hurry though, school starts September 8th. Next weekend in all of our weekend services, 
we'll be participating in communion together. We hope you will join with us for this special time of worship. Until then, if you would like more information about our church and ministries, see celebrationchurch.org or one of our social media platforms. Thanks for joining us today at Celebration Church, where God is met, love is felt, and lives are changed. Hey y'all, we're so glad that you've joined us today as we continue our conversation in Real Christianity. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Real Christians Pass Tests. Now I'd ask you to take out a Bible, a phone, an iPad, whatever you need to open your Bibles and go to 1 John. And you can also go on your browser and go to webcc.info and let us know how we can pray for you, follow along with sermon notes, you can give to our church, uh, you can also let us know any decisions that God leads you to today. Uh, and you can also register for in-person services, which we highly recommend. How many of you like tests? I know that probably nobody is raising their hand or jumping up for joy. <laughs> well, I was hoping that you really did love tests, but I think we really like tests about as much as getting our tooth pulled yeah. at a dentist without the medication absolutely. to numb us up, right? Um, but you know, tests are absolutely necessary. Yeah. We have to have tests in life really just to see what somebody knows. You know, I can remember uh, the pressure of having to pass the LEAP test. Essentially, it's, it's your X exam. You had to yeah. pass this thing by your junior year to be able to graduate. Of course, you had to pass it throughout your school year to be able to know a show, demonstrate what you knew. Uh, but I can remember how nervous I was because I was never a good uh, multiple choice, sure. true and false a type test taker. test taker. You give me an essay, buddy, I'm all over that like white on rice. Yeah. It's good. I, I could give you the answers for days. Sometimes yeah. I'd give you a lot of fluff too, um, <laughs> but I knew how to do that. Oh, yeah. But but in the LEAP test, man, I was so nervous because I knew that I had to pass it. Here it was my junior year. You had like two more opportunities if you failed it, yeah. but I didn't want to go to summer school. No. And I want my senior year to be a breeze. <laughs> I took the easiest load ever just to make it through my senior year. Uh, but the but the you know the reality is we we had to take it. I didn't like it, yep. but we had to take it. Yeah, we don't like tests. Nobody likes no. them. Nobody loves them. I haven't met the person yes that says, "Oh, it's Monday. Let's go take a test." <laughs> you know? yeah. No, nobody's doing that. Uh, yeah. But they are necessary. They they are, yeah. and, and they do help us to understand more about what we know, what we've learned. It hadn't come in one ear and out the other, yep. like so much information probably needs to, but so much information yeah. really does. In our lives. You know, John is going to be talking to us today really about these kind of tests. Yeah. And so let's look together in 1 John chapter 4, where we're going to begin in verse 13 through chapter 5, verse 5. John writes this And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live, live in love, live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face Him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. We love, or such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. We love each other because He first loved us. Uh, if someone says, I love God but hates a fellow believer, that person's a liar. If we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? Yep. And He has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves His children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey His commandments. Loving God means keeping His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We really have to ask ourselves, how do you know if a person is a real Christian? And so John really does give us in this passage a Christianity test that helps us to know for sure. Yep whether or not uh, we or others that we know are true followers of Jesus Christ. Yep. You know, so the first test he really, he really shows us here is the change test. Yep. You know, and he says in verse 13, he's given us a spirit as proof yep. that he is in us. Mm -hmm. He's given us spirit. And so when we accept Jesus, we've said this in many sermons before, uh, when we accept that the Holy Spirit takes residence up in our lives. I was thinking about, I was thinking about this when I thought about this, this verse. Um, when we drive down our neighborhoods, one of the first things I notice is the for sale signs. Yeah. 
And so how do I know a house is for sale? There's a sign in the yard. Yeah. But also I look back and I see that there's typically nobody there unless they're trying to live in it and sell it, which is very difficult. Yeah. Um, but if they're, usually they're not living in it. So the house is empty. You can see there's no curtains, there's no life, there's no furniture in the yard, there's no cars in the driveway, there's nobody there. How do you know that the house has been sold other than it's saying sold? Yeah. There's activity. There's people that have moved in. There's curtains. It's been yeah. personalized. There's furniture in the yard. There's maybe toys in the driveway. There's a basketball goal up on the garage, you know, if that's yeah. the kind of house it is. But there's evidence that somebody is living inside of that. Yep. And, and, and when I think about Jesus, uh, what Jesus has done for us by dying on the cross, we trusting Him as Savior and Lord, then the Holy Spirit comes and takes residence in us. Yep. It's evidence that this house has been sold. Come on. Because you see. God living in me. Yeah. There's evidence that I'm there. And so, you know, and Paul refers to that, that, that we're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so there should be Holy Spirit activity in taking the, place. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? It's His house. Yeah. Um, and, so, and Paul says this in Romans 8 9. He said, Those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them are not Christians at all. And so, literally, we're talking about evidence. Yep. No evidence, highly suspect, yep. right? Highly suspect. So, no evidence, not a Christian. Evidence, strong Christian. evidence yeah, yeah. that there's a Christian. It's a yeah. Christian. I mean, anybody can do like a temporary change. Yeah. But it's just that it's temporary, and it's yeah. usually to satisfy somebody for the moment to get them off their back. Yep. But true change has to take place from a supernatural source, as we talked about even last week. Yep. Something that's outside of the natural. No. Yep. And that has to be that has to be something that comes in us and literally rewires us. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. And and, and Paul says that's why he says those who become Christians become new. Persons. He yep. says that in 2 Corinthians 5. Yep. They are not the same anymore. The old life is gone. And I praise God for that. I praise God that my old life, because of Jesus, is gone. That doesn't mean I don't battle my old life sure. and the things I struggle with, but, but the ability to overcome is so much easier yep. than what it was before. And then he says, there's a new life that's begun. Yep. I'm something different. And it's not because uh, my wife made me different, or my kids made me different, or being a husband or a father, uh, you know, or being a pastor made me different. It's because something has come inside of me and changed me, rewired me. Sure. Gets my thinking different. You know, yeah. got rid of the stinking thinking. Yeah, the stinking yeah. thinking. And so, you know, you know, we need to think about what, what changes have occurred in my life uh, since I've received Jesus. If I can't see changes, that's a test. Mm, yeah. Maybe failing right now. Yeah. There should be evidence. Yeah. Also, we see we see people that have to pass the confession test. Mm -hmm. and, and John says it this way: uh, All who proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God. Have God living in them, yeah. and so uh, are we confessing? Uh, we're told this that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in our heart that God raised from the dead, then we shall be saved. Yeah. So there has to be something that's coming from here, and Jesus even said this: from the uh, from whatever proceeds from the mouth comes from the abundance of the heart. Yeah. And so uh, whatever's in here is what's going to come out of here. And if Jesus isn't in here, He's not going to come out here. Yeah. If we're talking Jesus and we get excited about Jesus talking about it. Um, you know, like I get preaching about Jesus, I get, I get pumped, dude. I, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have a heart attack one day on the platform <laughs> because I just get so excited. Remember, there's preachers that their doctors tell them they can't preach anymore because they had a heart attack. Yeah. They have to retire from preaching because they get so excited about preaching about Jesus. Oh, Man, yeah. their heart pumps. They drop dead, it bro. Should be. You <laughs> I, got the cheat code to life. I mean, I, and it's, this, this is not funny, but I, I a good friend of mine, that, uh, he was a youth minister for me for a while yeah. and an associate to my father. Um, he preached on Easter Sunday, the greatest day to preach about Jesus. Preached the Easter Sunday message. Stepped down off the platform to begin the altar call. Drop dead. Wow. So it happens anytime. Yeah. But you can just imagine what is, I mean, how awesome. You just got done preaching Jesus, yeah. and then you get to see Jesus, right? <laughs> we have to confess that there has to be something out of our mouth saying that we belong to Jesus. And you know, and there are so many people in the world today that are Christian, or say they're Christian. Let me say it that way. Yeah. Say that they're Christian. Um, in America, we're often referred to as a Christian nation. Oh my gosh, man, who, what world are they looking at? Mm. There ain't nothing Christian about our nation right now. No. There may be some Christian principles we were founded on, Absolutely. but as a nation as a whole, uh-uh, not at all. Um, and so that's been mistaken. And as a result, the world looks at us and say, look at this Christian nation, and then they watch at what we do. Yeah. And, and you know, that confession part is, a, is much about what we do as what we say, too. Oh, we confess more about Jesus by what we do than what we say. And one of the one of the worst things I've seen is someone that says I'm a Christian, and then will allow someone to slide that they love, yeah. uh, that believes that there are other ways to heaven outside of Christ. And it's like, hmm, mm -hmm. 
you're a Christian, which by definition means you're filled with God and God is love. And if you love, then you would be able to speak truth, because we're told to speak truth in love. You're going to let somebody slide by saying there's other ways to heaven when you yourself proclaim as Christ. Now, if you disagree, you disagree, but you're going to let them slide because you don't want to what? Rock the boat? You don't want to what? You don't want to uh, lose their conversation? I mean, what is it that you're scared it's of? If we are real Christians, then we're going to tell others about what we believe. We're going to tell others that what Jesus has done for us and the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. We're going to speak that. You know, here's the deal. You go somewhere good to eat, do you keep that to yourself ever? No. You tell somebody. Barbecue. They're like, oh, no, no. Hey, we can, we can talk here. Barbecue. Yeah. Now you're talking about right. like, barbecue. barbecue. You want real some barbecue. country food, something, something, you know? Yeah. yeah sushi. Ugh. Biscuits yeah. and gravy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now we're talking. Go. Breakfast, That's man. Right. Breakfast. Everybody likes breakfast. That's right. But same everybody. thing with a movie. If you've seen a good movie, you tell, about it. You tell people about it. You want to tell them what it is. You got the whole synopsis right in here. Ready to go. As a pastor, there's times I'm quoting sermon sermon references out of a movie because it was so good that I'm thinking while I'm watching the movie. Oh, I could preach on this, I could preach on this, I could preach on this, and all of a sudden I get the chance to do it. Yeah. But I'm talking about the movie, That's buddy, because right. it was a good movie. It just had that, it did that much to me when I watched of it. Of course, of and course. So, you know, if we let those kind of things influence to us to tell others about something, why not Jesus? Yeah. There's got to be a confession. So if we really are Christians, we can't help ourselves. It's kind of like telling a kid to sit on their hands. That don't last, that long. don't last long. No, a kid's not going to sit on their hands. They're going to get them hands out. It's going to be like Dennis the Menace. It's going to be pushing every little button they can find, right? Oh, yeah. And as a Christian, if we really are Christians, then we can't wait to tell the hope in which we have. You know, and I'm not talking about you got to do a hellfire brimstone message every time you talk to somebody. No. But by golly, you got to talk about what's what is driving your life. You know, it's got to be more than 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 some motivation because I feel good today, or because, it's because Jesus has done something in my life, and I got to tell somebody Absolutely. about it. And so I incorporate it into conversations in various ways. They don't look the same everywhere Should I talk. Let's ask this question: Who do I need to be sharing my faith story with? You know, who is it that I need to tell about Jesus in my life? Yeah. Um, as a friend, co-worker, who is it? No. John also talks about a confidence test. He says, we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. And he also goes on to say, perfect love expels all fear. Yeah. And so one thing, one thing that we have to understand is that, that people, everybody has fears of some kind. Of but one of the greatest things that people are afraid of is death. Uh, I'm sure if I were to do a survey of everybody watching today, yeah. uh, I bet 100% of the people would fall into one of two categories. Either they are afraid of how they're going to die, yeah. or they're afraid to I'm die. Just dying, yeah. Um, and, and, and there's lots of ways that we can die. We know that. I mean, I, I don't want to be found in a sta with a stab wound and, a, and, and drowning in my blood and my lungs yeah. on, in a street corner and can't call nobody, don't know nobody, and I'm just left there. Yeah. Man, that'd be horrific. Or, or jumping off a bridge with my car and yeah. watching it slow to drown, and I can't get out, I'm trapped. Please and I just slowly die to fire. death. You know, don't, yeah, don't set don't you on set fire. On fire. <laughs> um, I mean, there's lots of those things people think about. But here's the deal. The greatest statistic that can be scientifically proven yeah. is that 10 out of 10 people die. <laughs> it is. It's true. You die. It's I mean, the, you, the you're going to die. Thing, just, yeah. You might as well go ahead and I will die. Just say it. Yeah. I will die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, and we have no control about how that's going to happen. It could be a health-related issue. It could be a car wreck. It could be yeah. a gunshot. We have no control over how that. But one thing that we do know is as Christians, we have no reason to fear when it comes to death. Yep. Um, again, um, the, the how is one thing, but dying itself as a Christian really is a piece of cake. Uh, uh, Paul says this in Philippians 1. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So because of Christ in my life, dying is a piece of cake. Yeah. I don't have anything to fear. I've got eternal life to look forward to. Yeah. Um, and so I literally, absent from this body, the Bible says, to be present with the Lord. With the Lord. So I'm literally stepping out of one life and into another. Yep. Man, that is a piece of cake. That's cake and ice cream right there, 100%. baby. It's all day. And he you says know? something real important there in, in the beginning of that verse. For me, to live is Christ. Yeah. So obviously the death is gain part that 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 is amazing we have something to look forward to yeah. versus something to be fearful of right absolutely um, but we also need to acknowledge the amazing opportunity we have here right this is this, it, this is a journey from the time we open our eyes and take our first breath through eternity yeah. what do they say we're um, born to die we're born to die yeah. every day right. when we're born every day we live we're closer to death that's right that's right well for us it's like living more right so right. we're living i'm about to really be living what's the old country song live like you were dying i was yeah. skydiving i went my, rocky mountain climbing i went 2.7 seconds on a bull named fu man chew man i want to do that yeah. you know oh, yeah. I, I love deeper and i and i and i grow sweeter and 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 gave forgiveness i've been denied yep. 
And I love that. Someday if you get the chance to live like you were dying. I, I love that country it song. And I'm not even a country a fan. It but it's a song. reminder to us that we have to live. But we, we can live confidently because of Christ. Yep. Uh, and then we can die confidently, confidently yeah. because of Christ. That's right. Either way we have confidence. And so we can, as real Christians, we have a, we have a confidence to be able to overcome anything. Uh, any fear that we have, yeah. Christ literally is the answer. And I realize some people say, well, well, that's cliche, Pastor. I hate that. I hate yeah. when people say that's cliche. Look, if the Bible says it, you can call it cliche all you want. But truth is truth. Yeah. I yeah. can I can choose to walk on an I-10 and ignore the Mack truck that's coming yeah. at, at probably 80 miles an hour rather than the speed limit. Yeah. I could choose to not believe that it's coming. Sure. But you know what? That sucker's going to hit me. And it's going to splatter me all yeah, over yeah. I-10. You know what else is so, cliche? Running across the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> call me cliche. Yeah, call me cliche. Running fearfully yeah. across the road. You know, so so here's the deal. I mean, Jesus Jesus teaches us this stuff in Scripture, and and he and he and he and he gives a spirit for these men to write this stuff. So it doesn't make a cliche. It literally is. Jesus is the answer for everything we need. Yep. It never fails. Yep. You know, and so you know what what confidence is it that you need to find today to 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 that you would be going to heaven if something were to happen to you. What confidence that you need to have just to live today? What are you afraid to live for today? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have the confidence, you may not have Christ. Yeah. So the day can be a day of great, great significance for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You know? But he also talks about a companionship test. In verses 19 through 21, uh, he goes on to say, God Himself has commanded that we must love not only Him, but our Christian brothers and sisters too. And so yeah. real Christians truly love other Christians and demonstrate their love for them. And so, yep. uh, if I were to ask you who your best friend is, um, and then I ask you, how do you know that they're your best friend? Yeah. How would you answer that? That's a tough one. Because yeah. you know, it's just something you, you kind of you know, but I would assume it has something to do with um, loyalty or, or always knowing you can count on someone, which okay. I think is huge. I think um, they uh, they affirm you positively. They're not always tearing you down. They're, they're sure. building you up. So what uh, you're talking about here is that they demonstrate it. Something they demonstrate to you. it exactly. There's a demonstration that has proven yeah. that they are your best friend. Yeah, and it started off with, "Well, you just know." Well, this is exactly what we're talking about here. Well, how do you just yeah. know? How do you know? Well, you know because of the fruits. You know because when tested, there's a passing grade, right? Yeah. He has my back, or they love me when I'm not lovable. That's a that's an action. That's a, something right. verifiable. That's fruit. You know? And so what, what we're talking about here, we're, ar we're already talking about throughout this message that um, that there's there's a demonstration to prove that you're a Christian. Yeah. And so when we're talking about uh, companionship, that companion test, um, you know, we're talking about spending time with other believers. You know, and so that's meaning spending time with other people that passed the test as well, yeah. and so are, are we? A, do we do we say we love God and then we just kind of push everybody else out? I have met lots of people that claim they're Christians and don't go to church. Yeah, their reasoning behind not going to church will often entail something that has to do with somebody hurting them. Yeah. Okay, almost always, it's almost, almost always. never has to do with false teaching. It's usually somebody hurt them. Yeah. So they said something, treated something, they demonstrated something very unloving. Yes. But here's the funny thing. As Christians, haven't we been given forgiveness by the stupidity we've done toward God? Yeah, yeah you're right. Right? Yeah. So, God demonstrated His love that while we were yet sinners, while we did mess up stupid things, yeah. uh, Christ forgave us and died for us, right? Yeah. Then doesn't it make sense if we call ourselves Christians that we recognize that just like I needed forgiveness from Christ, so do you. So if you said something or did something stupid toward me that really offended me yeah. or hurt me, that I used as an excuse to no longer go to church, then the simplest thing would be, why not forgive you so that I can still be in fellowship with the place that I say that I love? Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I know people that say they love a church but won't go yeah. because so and so goes there. Yeah. Well, that building's bigger than two seats, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Sit on the other side because there's a lot of other people that love you, right? Yeah. Now, go, go to another church. Don't let stupidity in humanity keep you from enjoying your Christianity. Absolutely. You know, so part of Christianity is the companionship we have 
in the Christian circles. And so we look at Acts, one of the greatest things I love about Acts chapter 2 is it really gives the depiction of what the church looked like. And in fact that they met together constantly, yeah. they shared meals together, they listened to the teachings regularly together, uh, they even met in small groups together. It wasn't like two people, it was groups, big groups of people yeah. in a home. Well, it's a, this is the concept of the body, right? If we claim to be the body of Christ, your arm can't take a vacation and come back once a month. I wish my stomach would. What? <laughs> yeah, it could take a vacation, <laughs> reduce it down, make it a little slimmer. Yeah, it could take all the vac permanent vacation, right? You know, but that you're is, right. That isn't you couldn't digest anything, have no nutrients, <laughs> and die. I, that would go on the list of the places ways I wouldn't want to die. But uh, we can't can't claim this as a body or a family or anything if if that is. 1% of the time. Right. My arm might really might not like my shoulder. It might be really angry with yeah. it. But I need both of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Um and it's it's I think that's a great or one of the main ways that the world's doing that to us today, right? They keep us tribal. They keep us divided. Right. They make it seem like if that person's there, you can't be there because they are the worst. Right. Um which is why I think there's such a gigantic large scale, scale attack on Christianity. And you don't know it doesn't happen with Islam. Right. It doesn't happen with Buddhism. It doesn't happen with agnosticism or atheism. It's only Christianity that is constantly in the crosshair because it takes their main tactic, right? The world's main tactic, devil's uh, tactic to divide us, to right. keep us hating each other, to hate God, to hate everything, to be fearful of everything, to be fearful of death, to be right. fearful in all these things. And we don't owe anyone anything, whereas the Bible says just the opposite. Yeah. We do, we owe love. Yeah. We owe We owe it because it's been, owe, it's been given to us. It's been given to us. It's freely given, freely Absolutely. give. Absolutely. We we're supposed to give that back out what we've been given. Absolutely. You know, I think about I think about music groups over the years and and uh, there's a lot of music groups that that were really dynamic, incredible, yeah. uh, broke all kind of records in their their sales. Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden, um, you hear about them breaking up. Well, why do they break up? Because typically one individual thinks that they're the one that made the group. We did the same kind of stuff with the church. We think we're solo artists and we're one hit wonders, right? 100%, uh, and, yeah. and we can go out there and do what we want to do and be successful. The Bible doesn't teach that. Yeah. The Bible doesn't teach success in the individual Christian life. It teaches in the, the tribal or the group coming together that sure. we as the body, you know, you the arm, I'm the hand, somebody else the finger, somebody else the fingernail. Yeah. And as a result, we have a complete unit. Yep. And so, uh, so we need to think about what, what steps do I need to take to, to better show my love uh, in life and share my love and life with other Christians. You yeah. know, what, what do I need to do? You know, what, what do I need to change? What, how do I need to think, change my thinking right now uh, about things right now? Yeah. Who is I need to forgive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but That's you great. know, also John talks about the commitment test. Yeah. Uh, he says this in, in, in chapter five, verse one and three, he says, loving God means keeping his commandments. Yeah. Commitment, right? Yeah. So our, our when we demonstrate our love for God and his people, we strive to live by his word. Yeah. Um, it's not just a matter of, I love God, but the word, eh, not that important in my life. It doesn't work that yeah. way. God even says that it doesn't work that way. Yeah. We all know someone that says, I love God, but lives like the devil. Yeah. We all know somebody like that. Uh, I mean, if I, if I were to ask that question to anybody on the street right now, uh, that even non-Christian, oh, yes, yeah, I know somebody that says they love God, but man, I watch their life, you know. And, and here's the deal. People that want to look religious will say whatever they have to say but then their lifestyle is totally contrary to their words. Yep. And Jesus doesn't pull any punches with us. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. That's right. Drop the mic. Ball game out. <laughs> it is mic drop right there. Jesus, man, if Jesus right now, that's exactly what he'd been doing. Because he doesn't drop it on the floor, baby. Because that's all that needs to be said. You yep. love me, you'll obey me. Boom, that's it. Done. Ain't nothing else will be said. That's true. You don't have to even have to finish the rest of the Bible. That's yeah. done. It's done. Yeah. You know, and as Christians, you know, when we say that we love God and then we choose to take the word and we're just going to say, eh, this ain't poor. And I'll just, I'll just kind of pick it up when I can, yeah. you know. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, we get the hankering for some crawfish. We're just going to stop in a little local seafood market and find who's got the cheapest per pound. Yeah. It tastes good, you know, and we're going to get a little nibble nibble and, and be done, yeah. right? And, and people treat People treat the commandments of God like that, and it's like, no. And here's the deal. God really shrunk it down through Jesus when Jesus said there's really two commands. You do those two commands, you'll fulfill the whole law, the whole, yep. everything. Yep. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The, the second is likened unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. You yep. fulfill that, you'll fulfill the whole law. Every word of the Bible you'll fulfill just by those two those things. Two, yeah. 
but we don't even want to read that and, and meditate on what that means. Here's the deal. You know, we, we hear, what, we hear what, what Jesus says. We see what John's talking about here. And, and you know, even Paul talks about it in Galatians when he, he's talking about this whole wrestling match going on, that there's yep. this flesh and this spirit that's constantly in battle. And, and, and the reality is we, we, we're going to constantly be battling, but the reason we battle uh, so much with our spirit is because we've read something and we don't want to obey it. So we're wrestling against like, well, I just don't want to do that. And God says, but you will if you love me. Yep. And, and that's not being legalistic. That's just biblical fact. And so God sure. says, I'm asking, this is what your life should look like. And if I'm convicted by that, then I have the responsibility of saying, God, then I surrender what's going on in my life. If I'm committed to you, I will surrender. And so God's saying, if you love me, you will put this to the side. You'll submit this to me. You'll, you'll give this situation. Yeah. It don't mean it's not, it's not hard. But if we're committed to him, yeah. there's a commitment test. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meditate on what that means. And then my next response is obedience. Yeah. And, and, and not delayed obedience because I don't want obedience either. No, no, that, it means if God's showing me, I've got a responsibility. And I'll be the first to tell you, I screw up like that a lot, man. I, I read the too. Word and I'm like, man, I see what you're saying, God. I'm kind of getting that fidgeting moment in my life. And I'm kind of like, yeah. oh, man. I, I'll get to it, God. Yeah. I'll get to it. And the next thing I find myself doing, never getting never to getting it. Never getting to it. And, and I've still got this in my life. And so, um, you know, God wants us to have victory in our life. God wants us to overcome. God wants us to show real Christianity, but commitment is absolutely essential. Do we pass the commitment test? Yep. And then John also talks about the conquering test. I, I love this one. No, this, is, yeah. this is exciting here in verse 5 and 4 and 5. He says, every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. Yep. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And so when we talk about being real Christians, you know, the test that we're talking about here that's, that to me is the, is the most essential is that we have increasing victory over all these ungodly things in our life. Yep. The things that we really, really battle with last week are less of a battle this week. And yep. the next week should be even less of a battle. Yep. You know, and so, you know, when we talk about sushi a little earlier, uh, it ain't a battle for me to give up that ungodly <laughs> desire. You know, I just, uh-uh, you just say sushi, pfft, that's done. It's, I'm, I'm victorious, I belong to Jesus, baby, because I done gave up that. You know, but we're talking about those things we really, really wrestle with, those things that we continually trip over. Yeah. You know, so it's like we're not going to, it doesn't mean we're not going to trip over, but it means I trip over it less, and then trip over it less. Yeah. And there can come a point in time that we don't trip over it at all yeah. when we're told in Scripture to, to, to take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Yep. So when those things come up and, and, and we know it's going to trip us up, it's like God I don't want to think about this. Yeah. I don't want to visualize this. So God, I take this thought right now that's in my mind, and God, I give it to you. Yeah. And you know what happens? It's gone. Yeah. It literally is. And, and I to tell you, I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not oblivious to the fact that, that uh, Satan, uh, we talked about it before, that, that sin's presence is going to be around us. Yep. We can't remove its presence around our life, yep. but we absolutely can reduce its power in our life. Oh, 100%. And so when we, when we submit those things to the Lord, we can find continuous victory. And, and Paul says this, he says, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ yeah. who loves us. And so we want to break, uh, let's, say, let's say we've got a history in our family of alcoholism and people will say this, well, I'm just already bent toward alcoholism. Yeah. That may be true. And there's some medical science to say that, that that's very likely. Sure. And, and the scripture teaches about generational curses and generational blessings. But those curses and blessings are absolutely up to us to break. 100%. And so if I submit to Christ, I can absolutely break alcoholism. Yeah. I cannot just say, hi, my name is Chad and I'm an alcoholic, although I haven't taken a drink. You know, Celebrate Recovery will tell you, hi, my name is Chad. I was an alcoholic because Jesus saved me yep. and Jesus brought me victory over that. I'm yep. not an alcoholic anymore. Yep. I don't think about it no more. Yeah. It's there. I can't even remove alcohol from the world, but I've got victory Absolutely. because of Christ. Yep. Christ through me and, and me in Christ. And so I knew one individual right now that would tell you that uh, when they would come to church, it was like the devil was grabbing their shoulder and telling them they have no business up in this place. Yep. They'll tell you that story right now. Oh, yeah. And then uh, it wasn't long ago, uh, I had a chance to, to talk with them. We realized they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we prayed. He prayed to receive Christ that day. Yeah. And that day he said, you know, he said, I don't, I don't hear that voice. Yeah. I don't feel that tug on me anymore. That's awesome. And, and every day since, he's been able to wrestle against the things that he's fought that has won against him yeah. and overcome, rise up. Um, does he got a struggle? Yes, he's got a struggle. Everybody does until we go home to heaven. 
but he's come so far yeah. because of Christ. Christ was the victor. And so victory in our lives is a result of the development of faith yeah. in our lives. I love what Paul says in Galatians. He says that my old self has been crucified with Christ. Man, you done took this old self and you done nailed that sucker to the yeah. cross yeah. and ain't nobody taking it off. That sucker is dead. Yep. And yeah. so I am no longer me, it's Christ that's living in me. Yeah. It's not me living, it's Christ. Yeah, I'm breathing, I'm walking, but Christ's presence and spirit is the one controlling me. That's yeah. what we're talking about here. And so he loved me, uh, I trusted in him, and, and I surrendered to him, and my life changed. Yeah. Now, I want us to watch this testimony for Pastor Sidney Hidalgo, my good friend from our Slidell campus. Uh, listen to what God has done in his life. Hey, this is Pastor Sydney. I'm the campus pastor at, the, at Slidell. I want to take this opportunity to share my testimony with you. Grew up in a Christian home. My mom was a, a Pentecostal believer. My dad was Catholic. So you know I had a taste of both worlds there. Uh, as a young man, I grew up in a home with uh, five. I have It's five boys, six girls. Uh, but three of us actually lived in the same household. We went to church every Sunday morning. I remember um, the children's pastor at that time was talking about Jesus. And uh, we would just get crayons and we'd get Kool-Aid. And sometimes we get tacos because I went to a Spanish church. I always look forward to that, but one particular day I accepted Jesus Christ at that small little Spanish church off of Canal Street. As years went on, I grew up to be a teenager. At the age of 17, I backslid. Started doing drugs, started drinking, started hanging out with the wrong guys, and uh, started dating the wrong people. Eventually, during that time, um, I was doing a lot more drinking, started doing a lot more drugs. I remember every time we went out, my mom would tell me, son, there's nothing good happening out there. I pray for you all the time, that things were not, uh, actually praying for protection to make sure nothing don't happen to us. And I remember one particular day at three o'clock in the morning, my mom was praying for me. I used to have long hair earrings back then. Remember, I'm doing drugs. You know, I'm doing things I'm not supposed to be doing, dating the wrong people, hanging out with the wrong guys. I remember one particular day, my mom was praying for me. She put her hand over my hair and I had long hair then. And she was rubbing my hair. She was praying in Spanish saying, Lord, do whatever it takes to save my son, but don't take his life. A few years later, in 1993, my, my brother committed a terrible crime. Um, but in that time, on October 28, 1993, when my brother committed that crime, a month before that happened, God was already dealing with me. The first Sunday of October, I went up to my mom. After going out, I said, hey, mom, I want to go to church with you. She was shocked. I was shocked. I went to church that Sunday morning. The following week, I asked my mom that Saturday night, I said, mom, look, I'm coming home late from going out to the clubs, but I want you to wake me up and, and take me to church. I went to church that following Sunday. Then the third Sunday, I started going to church. And right then at that moment, that last Sunday of the month, when we found out the crime that my brother committed, I knew right then and there it was my time to change. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And ever since then, I started serving the Lord faithfully. I went to Bible college. After graduating from Bible college, I took a youth pastor's position. And from then on, I started moving toward the direction that God's called me. Now, I'm serving the Lord faithfully. I'm married. I have a, a son named London, and my wife's name is Tanya. I hope hearing this testimony, and many testimonies you can always hear from other people. I want everyone to know this. Jesus can change people's lives, and he's still doing it today, and he's going to do it forever. Now, these experiences, these tests that we've talked about, the list today, are good indicators yeah. that a person has really been transformed by the person and power of Jesus, just like we saw in Pastor Sidney's life yeah. with Come that on. testimony. Um, so, as you look at these tests, do you see any that you're in the middle of right now? Do you see, do you see the one that you're really trying to overcome and conquer, but you're really battling? That's feel. okay. Yeah. As long as you're fighting the yeah. fight, yeah. you're in the Absolutely. good direction. Um, do you see any that you might need to retake? Yeah. As we look at those tests, there's some that, you know, I, I think about the ACT test. When I took it the first time, I made it 18. I did fantastic in my English and math. I bombed my science and social yeah. studies, so I retook it. I took an 18, I made an 18 the second time. Yeah. I bombed the math and English, and I, man, did fantastic in the science, in the science yeah. and social studies. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, here's the deal. There, there's there's going to be times we're taking some of these tests and we're going to fail. Yeah. We're just not going to do well. And you know what? It's okay. Yeah. God is a gracious God. His mercies are new every day. 100%. Uh, but we got to keep going. Yeah. We got to keep pushing. We got to strive to retake it. So it is faith in Christ and that alone that brings God's forgiveness and salvation into yeah. a person's life. So even though we may be in the midst of a test, God is the one that keeps us going on. And so I have to ask this question today of you that are watching. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? You're never going to pass any test that we're talking about according to 1 John if you don't have a relationship? Has there been a time in your life where you knew you were a sinner and that that sin separated you 
from the Heavenly Father. Did you recognize that Jesus was the answer for that sin that you have? Did you ask Jesus to come into your life and forgive you of your sin and become the Savior and Lord of your life? If not, can I pray with you right now? You can pray a prayer just like this. I would just ask you to bow your heads with me and pray. There's no magic in my words. This is your heart to God. Pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner and that my sin has separated me from you. I believe that Jesus came to this earth, He died on the cross, and that He rose again. And I invite Jesus to come into my life as the answer for my sin, and I ask Him to forgive me of all my sin. I want to make Him the Savior and Lord of my life. Now, Lord, help me by Your power to walk in Your ways, to be obedient to Your truth. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Did you pray that prayer? Now, that sounds so simple, doesn't it? But God really didn't make it that simple. It's literally surrendering our lives to Him. But you may be here today, and, and you've taken that step, but you've never followed through in a thing called baptism. You see, here's the deal. Real Christians will follow through with baptism by immersion. Why is it so important? Because Jesus said, repent and be baptized. If Jesus said it, and He did it Himself, He was baptized, then why would we not want to obey the one we just submitted to? Yep. Huh? Answer that for me. If you've never submitted in baptism, I would love to be able to help you be obedient to the Lord in that way. Yep. And I'd love for you to go to webcc.info and go on to the My Decision link and tell us that you would like to be baptized. And I will be glad to follow up with you to help you with that decision. Yep. Because Jesus was baptized and He asked us to be baptized, then we should want to follow what the one we love has said do. Again, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. Come on. So, have you made that step of obedience? If not, why not now? And then I would ask you uh, this, do you know, do you know that you're saved? Do you know that you've been changed? And do you know that you're going to heaven? And if you do, what is it in your life that you need to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ today? What is it in your life that's holding you back from being all that God has you to be? I would ask you to pray this with me today. So as we close today, I want to pray over you. So bow your heads with me and let me pray as we think about what God has in our life uh, to overcome. Father, we come to you as believers today, and we know that you have an incredible plan for our lives. And we also know that there are many times we make decisions that will cripple the plans that you have for our lives. And so, God, we ask you to, uh, to, to penetrate our hearts today and reveal to us the things that are keeping us from being all that you want us to be. Father, we confess our sin, we confess our disobedience, we confess our rebellion, and we trust in you, an all loving and forgiving God, to cleanse us of those things and to reignite the passion that we have for Jesus so that we will continue pushing forward and finding victory in our lives, that we will find ourselves each and every day overcoming those tests and absolutely having the confidence that we are real Christians, that we truly belong to Jesus Christ. God, we love you, we praise you, and may our lives glorify you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. And amen. amen. Thank you for joining us for this conversation today. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section. And please, any decisions that you need to make today, let us know on webcc.info. God bless you. What a great service. If you prayed with the pastor or if you would like to request prayer, let us know at webcc.info by clicking on the appropriate tab. The Lord cares about you and we care about you. Filling out a prayer request will help our pastors and staff know how to pray for you and your family. It's our prayer that you found the sermon both encouraging and challenging. For resources to help you dig deeper into the topic shared today, look at the Dig Deeper section at the end of the sermon notes on webcc.info. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We hope you'll join us again, either in person or online at Celebration Church, where God is met, love is felt, and lives are changed.